Hello everyone and welcome to Willard Library. My name is Greg Hager. I've been the library director at Willard for 26 years, been on the payroll for 27 years. Willard Library is the oldest public library building in the state of Indiana. And um, as such, we are a, 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 an icon in Evansville, a, a Victorian Gothic architecture style building. Um, and it very much looks like a haunted place, even though that wasn't what we were originally established to do. Uh, Willard Library is named for Willard Carpenter, uh, our founder and a centric ph philanthropist. Um, if he were a poorer man, he probably would have been referred to as crazy. Um, instead, we used the word uh, eccentric. Um, and he was, a, he was very much an Evansville old personality. Um, uh, one of the wealthiest men, men in town, and when he established Willard Library, he wanted it to be a, a monument, not just to himself, but uh, for the city. And um, Willard Carpenter, who is, is, is pictured behind me, um, was um, a very hands-on, hard-nosed businessman. And when the library was being constructed in the 1880s, he could be seen here uh, on the job every day, carrying brick and mortar up and down the scaffolding. Um, unfortunately, he probably shouldn't have been doing that. And as an 80-year-old man, he uh, suffered a massive stroke in 1883 and passed away. He never saw the library open to the public, uh, which opened in March of 1885. Um, the stories that you're gonna hear today are not just stories that we're making up for your entertainment. They're based on fact and um, have been uh, handed down over the years. Uh, so at best they can be called legend, um, but many people, in many people's mind, they are truth. And I hope you enjoy those. Thank you. Nobody knows who the Grey Lady is. Um, there has been speculation over the years that the Grey Lady is the daughter of the library's founder, Willard Carpenter. Uh, her name was Louise Carpenter. And Louise was uh, very much like her father, a, a, a stubborn, hard-headed person, and the two frequently butted heads. Um, Louise was married, for example, to a man that, that her father really disliked. And in all fairness, Louise didn't really like him much either. And her father encouraged her over the years to simply divorce this man and move on. Um, and Louise did, only after her father passed away. Over the course of time, Willard Carpenter left the bulk of his fortune to support Willard Library. And he did provide for his family, but Louise, decided that she really felt like she didn't get her fair share of her father's fortune and sued the library. Uh, in, you know, late 1800s, turn of the century courtroom drama, um, Louise lost her lawsuit against the library. And some people say because of that, she is the gray lady who haunts Willard Library to this day. There are others who speculate that it's not just Louise, that there are many other entities that haunt Willard Library. And um, over the years, number, a number of paranormal investigators have been here to investigate these claims. And all of them pretty much agree that there could be more than one entity haunting Willard Library, but none of them have agreed on the number of entities or who is haunting Willard Library. Library sit here at Willard Library and I'm 
here to share with you some fun facts and some stories about our resident ghost, the Lady in Grey. So the Lady in Grey has been described as in a Victorian style dress uh, in grey. Sometimes she wears a veil, sometimes she doesn't. Uh, a lot of people who have had experiences with the Grey Lady tend to have feelings or senses that she's around more so than actually being seen. Uh, some people have said that uh, temperature will drop or um, the pair of bangs or footsteps sometimes. Um, and one of the stories actually that I'm going to tell you today is about one of our, our maintenance men. Uh, we have these beautiful chandeliers all over the library and a lot of them require a ladder to be up on. So with the chandeliers and lots of different light bulbs, uh, they're constantly being changed. Uh, in a certain case, uh, our maintenance man went ahead and changed one of the light bulbs, this one up here, uh, and come to find out all the light bulbs were out. That was odd, considering he just changed them. So he grabs his ladder and goes back up there and come to find out the light bulbs have been unscrewed just enough that they weren't on anymore. Which we find odd, considering that they were working when he was done and we need a ladder to go up there and <laughs> unscrew them. There's been another incident with another light fixture downstairs that actually required um, pliers to be to remove the light bulb. That one too also was slightly unscrewed. He says it happened within a two week time frame. He says you know, building, the building shakes and you know vibrates, but not enough for a light bulb to come unscrewed like that. And not enough that it doesn't happen very often. And when it does, who knows? So the gray lady has a tendency to be a jokester and play. Uh, there has been a situation where I, myself, uh, was recently hired and I was by myself on the adult services floor and I decided, you know what, I'm new, I'm going to introduce myself just to make everything nice and I did and I said, you know, um, I, I don't like being scared, so don't touch me, don't move chairs, I don't like any of that, but you can let me know you're here in various different ways. And uh, about the 45 minute mark, I'm by myself this entire time, and I hear our elevator door ding open. And no one's coming out. And I think, oh, it's probably one of our patrons. Um, some of them need some extra help getting out of the elevator, and I didn't want that door to shut on them. So I walked around the corner, and there was nobody there. And I thought, that's odd. And I didn't think much about it until I saw that our call light next to the elevator was lit. And the interesting thing is that call light does not light up unless it's been pressed. I was by myself the entire time and I didn't push that button. I did various different tests to try to debunk it and I couldn't. So I feel that that was the Lady in Grace way of letting me know that she was welcoming me, she heard what I had to say, and she let me know that she was there.
Taylor. I work in the adult services department here at Willard. Right now I am standing in the basement hallway of the building. This is actually the spot the Grey Lady was very first sighted 83 years ago. Um, the sighting occurred um, in 1937, the same year as the Great Flood. Um, we had a night custodian who was here to stoke the coal furnace. So he came in, um, he had a small flashlight with him. He's walking down the hallway and he sees a figure. Um, he described it as a woman who was dressed all in gray, had gray shoes, a gray dress, and a gray veil over her face. He was supposed to be the only person in the building at the time. It really scared him. He reported it to his boss the next day and a lot of people thought it was just a figment of his imagination. It was, the, it was late at night, um, he was probably just seeing things. So over the course of the next few weeks, he continued to see this figure. Um, and he actually decided that Willard was not the best place for him to work after all. And he actually quit his job here, unfortunately. So even today, people still report um, regular occurrences of strange things happening in the building. Um, things like the water faucets in the bathrooms turning on and off by themselves, uh, the toilets flushing when no one's around. Um, some people have reported their technological devices just aren't working right. Um, other things are like the lights will flicker sometimes. And we also have reports of our elevator opening and closing all by itself when after hours when uh, no one in here, is here in the building. Um, so. It's pretty easy to think that our gray lady may be uh, making herself known in that way. This is the story pit of the library in the children's department. It is the most haunted area of the library where we tend to get the most activity. Um, one of the most popular stories from down in this area that I get asked about and tell people is in the 80s there was a psychic fair out at what is now USI and psychics from all around came and a woman and her husband went to the psychic fair and she was asking around, you know, where's a haunted place? And they suggested that she visit Willard Library. So she did. And she got here and she really didn't feel anything and she didn't think it was gonna be a productive visit. And she toured the building and she felt that way nearly the whole time till she got to the bottom of the stairs. And that's where the children's apartment is, in the basement. And she got to the bottom of the stairs and she said, oh, you know, I think I feel something. And she came in here to the story pit and she had a seat on the stairs and she went into a trance and her husband was asking her questions and she wasn't responding. And when she got out, she said, oh no, there's definitely something here. Um, she said that she had seen a vision of a woman looking into water and she had actually thought that the ghost was tied more to the land than to the building, which is interesting because you don't hear that a lot. And you really don't think about that aspect of it very often. Another good story is um, Mrs. Wells, who was a children's librarian in the 90s. She was shelving books. And in the 90s, there was this fad where ladies would wear big dangly earrings. And Miss Wells was wearing some big dangly earrings. And if I remember correctly, she was right over in this area and she was shelving books. And somebody moved her hair and moved her earring as if they were looking at her earring. And she turned to see who it was and there was nobody there. And she even went out of the story pit to ask a fellow employee who had been in and nobody had been in here. So that's another really eerie one. So every year Willard has a book sale. And one year, Greg, our director, was had a news place come in and he was doing a little interview for it. And they were out in the hallway 
and all of a sudden they heard this big commotion and it was before the library was open so they didn't know what was going on they came rushing in and they found the librarian in hysterics she was beside herself she had been doing what we do pretty often which is weed books just um, take books out of circulation and she turns around and sees the shelf like this with about every third book pulled out like this and she really it freaked her out because she knew she was alone and she knew that it hadn't been like this just moments before and so Greg and the news guy came in and they did a little recording in front of it and whenever the newscaster got back to the station he was looking at all that he would filmed that entire part of it was gone it was just completely deleted like it hadn't been done really freaked everybody out well just so happened that years later the department head down here miss Rhonda she had the same thing happen to her she was weeding books she turns around and looks and about every third book was pulled out of course it freaked her out she went and got a co-worker miss Anita who also still works here and pulled her over to look at it sort of as a sanity check and miss Anita <laughs> freaked her out they took a picture and they still have a picture of it today and I believe they even made a list of what the books were it was really interesting My name is Rhonda Moore and I'm really glad to be talking to you today from the Browning Gallery and this is the new annex that we've built onto the back of the library. Um, it's very useful and we are so lucky to have it here. We use uh, do programming in it, special programming for adults and children. Uh, I'm here to tell you some stories about what happened down here with the Grey Lady because yes, she's even been in the annex. When they were building the new annex, they were putting in um, the lights and the uh, projector that comes out of the ceiling. And the projector decided one day, after it had been installed and everything had been done, that it was going to go up and down and up and down. And they got it stopped and it proceeded to do it again the next day and the next. So it did it three days in a row where they could not figure out why it was doing going up and down on its own. Also down here in the new annex, we had some toilet problems. They just kept flushing sometimes when there was no one there. Um, it made for good toilet, good clean toilets, but they had several plumbers in here looking at that. This is a really wonderful place for people. Um, if you notice, it's kept in the style of the rest of the library and local people. We use local carpenters and things to build this part of the annex and it's a wonderful meeting place.